me by reading Deuteronomy chapter 28 verses 1 and 2. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verses 1 and 2. Thank you. When we uh, read the word of God from Genesis to Revelation, there's something that is very clear. And that is that God's intention was and is today, even today, to bless mankind. Hallelujah. What does the book of Genesis say? When God created male and female, what did he do? He bless them hallelujah so in order for us to to receive this blessing that god has for us there is something that we have to do in return and what is that walking in obedience hallelujah now obedience sounds like a very powerful and a, and a large word but the meaning is so simple what does it mean it's very clearly stated in in, in the first verse it says hearken to the voice of god and obey do what god tells you to do that's it it's simple. And when God tells you to do something, you do just that. Hallelujah. Not more than what he says, not less than what he says. Doing exactly what God tells you to do is obedience. Simple as that. And today we are going to see the lives of three people whom God blessed. Hallelujah. How many of you like to be blessed by God? Hallelujah. Can we have a little more excitement? How many like to be blessed by God? Hallelujah. It's God's will and intention to bless you. And today we are going to see uh, the life of Abraham. When we say Abraham, what is the first thing that comes into your mind? Blessing. Hallelujah. And, and, uh, God, and, and Abraham received uh, a son at the age of 100. Those are the things that come into our mind when we say Abraham. Hallelujah. But we fail to focus on what brought the blessing into Abraham's life. There was something that Abraham had to do to receive the blessing. There was something he had to do to receive his inheritance and to receive his son at the age of 100. And what was that? God told him, come out of your father's house. Come out of that land. He had to come out first in order to receive the blessing. Is that right? He had to obey God's voice and he obeyed it gladly and what was the result he was blessed at hundred years he received a son he was blessed with his own son you know what happens when you obey the voice of God there's a shift that takes place in your life what is this shift you shift from natural to supernatural you shift from limited to unlimited you know ladies you love this place no limit hallelujah <laughs> we all love to shop there and what happens when you walk in obedience? Your life comes under no limit. No limits. Hallelujah. I like the testimony that Brother Kumar shared about, I think, two to three weeks ago. When there was nothing, there was no gas, he had gas. Hallelujah. So this is the, this is the blessing that you receive when you walk in obedience. And, and the, thought, the first thought I want to share with you is when you walk in obedience, the impossible becomes possible in your life hallelujah like abraham was blessed at 100 years now nobody can do that not even the best physician can do that hallelujah but god did it so he will do the impossible in your life when you walk in obedience so the first point i want to leave with you is if you want to experience the supernatural and the impossible become impossible god doing this in your life walk in obedience the second point, let's look at the life of good old Isaac. Hallelujah. What does Genesis chapter 26 verse 12 say? Can I ask the dear sister to read it please? Genesis chapter 26 verse 12. Genesis chapter 26 verse 12. Then Isaac sowed in that land and received in the same year an hundredfold and Lord blessed him. Hallelujah. Now, what was going on in that land? Prosperity? No. Famine. Hallelujah. And what did, uh, what did Isaac do? He sowed in famine. 
And what happened? In that same year, he received a hundredfold harvest. But before that, there was something that God told him to do. There was a word that came from the Lord. What was it? God told his father, Abraham, go. But God told Isaac, don't go. Hallelujah. He said, don't go to Egypt. And what did Isaac do? He stayed. Abraham went. Isaac stayed and he obeyed the voice of God. So what happens when you walk in obedience? There was famine in the land, but God blessed Isaac. Now, there, is there a famine in our country today? Actually, I, I mentioned Brother Kumar's testimony a little too early. Is there a famine in our land today? Yes, there's a famine of gas. There's a famine of kiripiti. Pal, pal. <laughs> there are a few words I know. So uh, there's a famine. Then there, there was going to be a famine of electricity. But what happened? Like I said, Brother Kumar, he had not one, two cylinders. So when you walk in obedience, no matter what happens around you, God will bless you. And when you walk in obedience, you come under supernatural provision in your lives. People may not have kiripiti, but you will have. You will enjoy a nice cup of milk tea in the morning. Hallelujah. You will enjoy a nice cup of coffee with your milk in the morning. Why? Because when you walk in obedience, and I want you to understand one thing. Nothing that happens on earth can disrupt the blessings that God has for you. Just because there's a famine on earth, that doesn't mean there's famine in heaven. Hallelujah. So what is it that, that releases or what is it that stops the blessing? And you think that the things in the country are affecting you is when you don't obey the voice of God. But when you obey what he tells you and what he wants you to do, when you walk in obedience, nothing affects you. There can be a famine, but you will be blessed. That's what God did in the life of Isaac. In famine, he received a hundredfold. Hallelujah. Today we heard a testimony. Once again, I'm using uh, Brother Kumar's name, Jobs. There is a job famine in this country, but God blesses his people with jobs. Last, I think it was last week, a sister shared how she had got a job exactly how she likes. God gave her the desire of her. I know people are losing jobs, but when you walk in obedience, what does God do? In the midst of job famine, you are blessed with jobs. Hallelujah. God will provide supernaturally when you walk in obedience. Hallelujah. So the first point was when you walk in obedience, impossible becomes possible. The second point is when you walk in obedience, supernatural provision, supernatural harvest is guaranteed in your life. Hallelujah. The third point, the third person, Noah. How many of you know Noah? We all know him. <laughs> okay, so we see that God protected him when there was a flood. When you walk in obedience, the third point is there's supernatural protection. Hallelujah. But in order for that protection, in order for the floods not to affect him, there again, Noah had to do something. What? Obey the voice of God. What did God tell him? God told him, build an ark. Hallelujah. And did God stop at that? One thing we need to understand is, you know, God is not a God of confusion. When he speaks, he speaks clearly. When he speaks, he gives you the correct specifications. He speaks very accurately. You know, some of our employers are not like that you know they sometimes they tell you exactly what to do sometimes they just say just sort this out so you have to figure it out but God is not like that he tells you very clearly he specifically tells you this is what I want you to do God was so specific that he even told Noah what type of wood to use he gave the height and the breadth and the length of the ark he said you know have a have the door on this side the window must be like this he was so specific and we when we, we see in the word of God even the temple whatever God wanted done he gave the specifications so and what did what does the word of God say Noah did exactly how God wanted him to do it hallelujah he didn't put his you know we say a little two cents he didn't put his two cents and think no I'll just adjust the window I'll put the door here no he did exactly what God wanted him to do and what was the result supernatural protection. What does the word of God say? A thousand will fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. So supernatural protection is upon you when you walk in obedience, no matter what happens. What happened in Egypt that day? What did God say? God said uh, through Moses not to come out in the night. Hallelujah. What did God do to Noah? God shut him in. Have you read that part where God shut him 
in. And when you walk in obedience, God shuts you in. Shutting in means what? Shutting out evil. Hallelujah. He shuts you in to shut out any danger, any evil that might be coming close to you. That's what God does. So when, when you, wherever you go, whatever you do, when you are walking in obedience, God has shut you in. He has shut you in his presence. He's, you're covered by his wings that you have supernatural protection. He shuts out the devil. He shuts out everything which is not, not um, which is supposed to do you harm. And what does he do? He protects you wherever you go. Hallelujah. So the third point when you walk in obedience is supernatural protection. And in closing, I just want to share something. The importance of being sensitive and obedient to the Holy Spirit. You know, when God tells you to do something, do it. And if he tells you do it now, do it now. Do you know that two seconds delay can be too late? I'll give you an example. I'll give you a share of testimony, two testimonies uh, before I close uh, to show the importance of obeying the voice of God. You know, don't worry, ladies, if your chicken curry is, you know, on the fire and God tells you, I want you to pray now. Just switch the stove off and go and pray. God will help you with your chicken curry. Hallelujah. I'll tell you why. I once read a testimony of a, of a person who was trying to commit suicide. He was about to hang himself when he heard a tap at his front door. Some of you may have even read this testimony. And the tapping went on and he waited quietly because he thought this person will get tired of tapping and just move off so that he can continue with his mission of ending his life. And what happened? The tapping went on and on and on and he thought okay let me just answer the door and thereafter I will commit suicide I will end my life and when he opened the door who was standing there a, a person who was sensitive enough to the Holy Spirit and he had come to share about the love of God and the gospel of Jesus Christ and do you know what happened the person who wanted to end his life ended up giving his life to Jesus and he was saved and you know you know why that happened because that person was sensitive to the Holy Spirit what if he had delayed two seconds it would have been too late. I'll give you one more example, another testimony. There was a pastor after he finished his Sunday service. I think you may have read this as well. He wanted to stop by the grocery store and buy some things for his uh, home. And while he was, you know, shopping around, the Holy Spirit said, buy some milk, fresh milk, buy a gallon of milk. And then, you know, the, nat uh, the natural response is, but Lord, I don't need milk. But the Lord said, buy the milk. So in obedience to the Holy Spirit, what did he do? He bought the milk. And after he had paid his bill and he was setting out, the Lord told him, now turn to the right. Then the, the pastor said, but you know, Lord, I don't live there. He said, it doesn't matter. Just turn to the right. And he turned. And as he kept going down the road, the Lord said, stop. And he stopped at a house and he got off and the Lord said, now go and give them that milk. And when he took that gallon of milk and he walked up to the door and he kept tapping. And after, after quite some time, a person came, a gentleman came and opened the door very, very slowly. And in the background, he can hear a child crying, crying out loud. And, and this pastor said, the Lord wanted me to give you this milk. And you know that the father broke down because he said his baby was hungry and he didn't have money to buy milk. And because that pastor was sensitive to the Holy Spirit, he was a blessing to that family. Hallelujah. If you want to be a blessing to someone, we are called to be a blessing. God blesses you to be a blessing. And if you want to be a blessing God's way, you have to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. So if God tells you to pray for someone, pray immediately because your prayer enables God to save a person or enables God's power to work in the life of someone where he will be even saved from death or some danger. So being obedient to the Holy Spirit not only brings a blessing to you, but it brings a blessing to each one, to others as well through you. Hallelujah. So this is the thought that God wanted me to share with you. And um, first, the Lord spoke to me, and I have to be obedient first. So I just want to thank God once again for this opportunity. I want to thank Sister Tamara as well. And uh, I pray that all of us will, uh, including me, will be more and more sensitive to the Holy Spirit, be obedient, and be a blessing to others. God bless you.